I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to take a first look at drum replacement. Now this is a really interesting technique. It allows us to take an audio file and to turn its constituent individual hits into MIDI drum parts, meaning that we can swap out the individual hits from an audio region into MIDI regions. Now this is useful in a number of different contexts. Let's suppose you constantly reach for the same beat loop and what you want to do is to say, well, I really like the groove of that, but I want to apply it to different sounds, which is kind of true here. And when I press play, for those of you who watch this channel regularly, you're probably going to recognize this drum loop. But it's also really useful in the context of saying, okay, well, I want to use an audio uh, loop as a start point. I want to convert it into uh, MIDI, and then maybe I want to enhance that with some additional hits of my own, which is much easier to do with MIDI than it is when you're chopping up audio files. So here's the beat loop we're going to be working on, just one bar long. Okay, so what I want to do is to break this beat loop down into three separate elements, the kick, the snare, and the hats. And just by glancing at it, I can see that, for instance, I can see that the hats play on the off beats. So what I'm actually going to do is to just select the scissors tool, and without being too precise, what I'm actually going to do is to give each little bit of this beat loop a little bit of extra space. I'm going to chop just before this off beat, which I know is a hat, and then what I'm going to do is to chop just before this next kick. I'm literally going to go through and just slice up this beat, giving each little component element a little bit of kind of sort of pre-attack time, if you like, by chopping just before each individual file happens. And the reason for that is that I don't want to obscure the individual uh, sort of um, transient attack point of each individual part of uh, the drum loop. What I'm then going to do is to create some additional tracks. I'm going to need three of them, in fact. I'm going to create three separate tracks, and I'm just going to create those here. And what I'm then going to do is to move each kit piece element down to its own track. This is going to be where I'm going to put kicks, this is where I'm going to put snares, and I'm going to put the hats down here on track three. So by doing this, what I'm in a position to do is to decide where I want each thing to go. Well, certainly this first one is going to be a kick, and the same thing is going to be true at beat three as well, but we'll come to that in just a moment. What I'm then going to do is to take this second portion down onto the hi-hat part, and I need to be careful that I don't drag it left or right, I want it to be locked into position where it exists right now, and then what I'm going to do is to take this region down to the snare drum channel. But again, I need to be a little bit careful because what I actually want to do is to make sure that this little pre-kick here is a kick drum and that the following hit is a snare drum. So I'm actually going to copy it down to both individual channels. I'm then going to shorten this one so that it becomes a kick, and I'm going to make this one shorter in the other direction so again it becomes a snare. So I'm just in a position to go through and decide where I want each of these elements to go. Now of course I could also just copy them from one to another, but I'm deliberately copying this second hi-hat down because I can see that it's a different um, volume. Whereas this first one is a slightly larger waveform, this one's a little bit smaller, and what that's actually going to do is to transfer itself into different velocity values when we turn this audio into MIDI by using drum replacement. So I've effectively got my loop coming together now. What I'm going to do is just to copy this region down to here, and to make this nice and quick, what I'm going to do is to shorten this down to become a kick drum again, and then effectively what I'm going to do is to make sure that the second half of the bar is the same as the first. Effectively, I've now got half a beat loop, and I can then turn around and say, right, I'm gonna just make sure that the second half of the pattern is the same as the first. If I then mute the original, we should more or less hear the same beat loop, but now each element has been chopped up onto its own track. So we've got our groove, but now each individual track is playing its own kit piece. So how do I begin to bring in this idea of drum replacement? Well, the way that I do that is to select one track. This is going to be the kick to start with. And then what I'm going to find up here in the track options is that I've got replace or double drum track. While I'm here, I'm also going to just learn its key command, which is option and D, because we're going to need this more than once. So as you can see from this particular element or this particular option, I've got the option to either replace or double 
the drum part. So in other words, do I want to replace it completely or double it? Well, I can make that choice in a moment. I'm just simply going to select this option and up comes a window. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is to say, OK, well, what sort of a drum is this? Well, this is my kick. So what I'm going to do is to select the kick option from here. And you can see that straight away, what Logic has done is to assume that I want to replace this with one of the sounds from within the library. I've got a bunch of acoustic kicks, a bunch of um, electronic kicks and some layer kicks as well. So in a minute, we're going to see exactly what what that means. But if I scroll in, what I am in looking to try and do here is to make sure that I'm replacing each individual moment where the kick drum plays. And you can see that I've got a threshold control which is going to allow me to do that. Now effectively what this is doing is to look at volume threshold to ensure that each individual kick is picked up. And by selecting minus 8.5 you can see that I've got all of the kicks in apart from the ones just before beat 3 and just before the last kick at the end of that bar as well. As I drop down, they'll suddenly appear when the threshold gets low enough to detect it. So what I've got here is now a threshold at minus 25 dB, which is effectively going to allow me to replace the kick, which means it's going to mute the original audio with a MIDI version of that sound instead. Now, the advantage of doing this becomes clear when I press OK. And suddenly we can see that this first sound has become muted. And now what I've got is the opportunity to choose a sound for this channel instead. I'm going to just select this kick button here and press play. And we're hearing that little skip into that beat. We'll look at that in a moment. And what I can do just from the library here, if I want to, is just to audition some different kicks. Live sounding one. Okay, so I've clicked on 19 at random. I quite like it. So we'll go with that for a moment. Let's have a look at the MIDI for a moment as well. If I double click here, I can see this little note is being introduced here. I can see that actually they're slightly overlapping. I'm going to just adjust this MIDI. But what this has done is to introduce this idea that each individual hit has been turned into its own velocity value. I can see that this part of the original waveform is a lot quieter than the hit that comes after it. And that's been reflected in the velocity. So in other words, quieter slices of audio become uh, quieter velocities or lower velocities. And of course, now that it's MIDI, I'm in a position to actually change that if I want to. If I want this volume difference between the quieter and louder moments to be much less wide, of course, I can just adjust the velocity here. And effectively now I've got the groove of this pattern at the same time as now being triggered over MIDI. So there's my kick drum, all sorted, and now it's time to turn to the snare. So I'm going to click on this individual track. I'm going to select Control and D, which was our, um, our key command. And then I'm back into the replacement and doubling window. And here I just need to select the snare drum and do the same thing again. Except that you'll notice that even with a really low threshold point, Logic hasn't detected these individual hits. Now, one thing that I've noticed is that you really do need to give each individual hit a fair amount of sort of pre-attack time for this process to work. I'm going to select both of these snare drums and I'm just going to back these waveforms down even to slightly include the snare, the kick drums that are there within those uh, waveforms beforehand. And this time if we come back to selecting our track, it is going to have detected those individual hits. And then if we need to make an adjustment in MIDI land, once we've actually converted this into MIDI, then we can. Again, obviously for now, I don't need to worry too much which sound I'm selecting. And obviously we've picked up the threshold points. And again, this time, obviously we're selecting replacement rather than doubling so that we've got, again, a, a full replacement of this sound rather than simply just picking up um, the sound or doubling it with an additional sound from the library. So again, I can press OK. Immediately, it's going to mute the snare straight away. And then we can go in and have a look at the MIDI and check exactly where it's put it. And if what we want to do is to make sure that these really do play on the downbeat, then obviously we're in a position to select them both and move their start points back. So I'm just going to do that a little bit and just see what happens when we make these a little bit tighter from a timing perspective. So now what we've got is the original hi-hat, which is here. We've got one kick drum. Remember, at any stage, I can swap this for any sound I like. And we've got a snare drum, which again, I haven't actually selected selected yet. I just went with the default option and that sounds like this now. Now 
Now remember, at any point I can come into the snare drum and go looking for individual elements from drum kits if I want to, simply by uh, selecting a whole new drum kit, which will obviously trigger on the snare drum sound, or obviously I can load an electronic kit element as well if I want to. Now one thing to show you about the hats, if I come back into these, we've got a nice amount of sort of pre-attack time on each one, so I think from a detection point of view, this won't be so much of a problem. But what we're going to find is that in terms of actually dedicated drum replacement, the three sounds that are available to us are kicks, snares, and toms, and everything else falls under the idea of other. Now, what happens when I select this option is that we have a chance to then assign this individual collection of audio files to a particular note. Now, if you're familiar with the way that drum kits tend to be constructed, if I decided that I wanted these to be closed hi-hats, usually the closed hi-hat exists on note F sharp one of a drum kit. So what I can do is to click here and say, okay, I can't actually select a drum kit element directly in the same way that I can with kicks and snares. But what I can do is to put these notes on a closed hi-hat sound. And that means that if I decide to swap these out for an ultra beat kit or for any other um, of Logic's uh, drum library instruments, it will then trigger this sound back as a closed hi-hat. By the way, it's also worth noting that this is my opportunity to turn the hi-hat part into any other sound I might like. If I suddenly decided I wanted these offbeat hits to be rim shots, well, I could select D sharp one or C sharp one if I wanted to, or assign this to a different key on purpose in order to turn my pattern into a different type of pattern. So I'm going to select the closed hi-hat sound, and then what I'm going to do is to press OK, and we should see that those notes have been detected, and sure enough they have, and now I'm in a position to come back and assign this sound to any instrument I like, and if I suddenly decided I wanted to assign this to an ultra beat kit, then of course I can swap that out and then go and find the kit that I wanted to work with. And that sound is now going to be sort of happening on F sharp one, and as a result it will play back um, as um, a closed hi-hat. I'm going to just select this hip-hop kit. But they're going to be really quiet because those individual audio files were very, very low in volume. So what I'm going to do straight away as we play back is to adjust their velocity. So what we've done is to learn how to turn an audio file into a series of replaced drum sounds. Now there are a couple of things we need to be careful with. We've already seen that we need to be thinking really carefully about the attack time for individual slices of audio to make sure that those detections take place accurately. We've also seen that only kick, snare and tom sounds can be directly replaced with sounds within Logic's library. But the crucial thing of course is that once sounds are MIDI, they can become anything. You can now take, let's say, the uh, detected hi-hat part and double it to a synth if you suddenly want that to be a little sort of plucky offbeat sound. Or what you could do, of course, now that it's MIDI, would be to continue to explore the different options from a sound point of view for what you want these sounds to actually be. But crucially now, effectively, we've got a much more malleable collection of sounds than simply working with sounds directly out of the loop library.